Margaret, described by her sister Bella. Dear Father, I hope you will pardon me for all I say about my family, as it is a thing which I would never have thought of ever speaking about to anyone, but I thought it was what you wanted. I have written the enclosed, some little things which have passed between us. When Margaret was at school, she was always bright and cheerful. She was always very charitable, especially in helping those who were in difficulty with their lessons. She was also very agreeable with her playmates, although she did not like to mix up with those who were rough. All her companions thought a lot of her. She kept aloof from coarse girls, but she was always pleasant in answering them whenever they asked her any questions. She even remarked how polite they were when they spoke to her. But she would say, I do not think we are meant to mix up with coarse people, or perhaps it is my pride. She was in the same class as myself for a long time before I left school, and I do not remember her ever getting punished. Her charity towards all and especially towards me was great, ever trying to help me with my lessons. Margaret was always very smart at school and liked to be very clean and tidy, and Mother preferred her to me to help her to do a little cleaning, and she liked very much to help with the housework. When we began to go to night classes, we went on two nights for dressmaking and one night for cooking. She won a certificate for good work and another for good attendance, which enabled her to go to the high school at Ethel Crescent, which she liked very much. All her playmates liked her very much, and in the summer, when we had a picnic, they all used to tell her to run, for she was always sure of winning a prize, but she did not often run, and if the prize was sweets, she used to share some, but she always kept father's and mother's share, and a little for the ones at home. She used to have much pleasure in telling mother and father all about it and how she enjoyed herself. So also, when father's and mother's birthday came round and at Christmas, she would save her halfpennies, for we seldom got a whole penny to buy them a little present, which she often got at the penny bazaar. But father and mother used to be more than delighted, little though it was, for she never forgot. She was also good at swimming, but never went in for the school galas, though she was very pleased when St. Patrick's won the shield. She went with those girls that passed their classes to the school of housewifery. She was a favourite at ball catching. When school was over, Andrew was always with us, and we kept ourselves to ourselves. We played in a yard close by our house, where we had swings. Whenever any little ones were standing by and looking sad, because they had no swing of their own, Margaret would say, let us give them all twenty each on our swing, and make them happy. Sometimes I overheard them saying, see that girl, well, she gave me a swing. Oh, she is a nice girl. She was a great lover of silence, but if words were turning too sharp, she would try and change the subject, saying something to make her little companions laugh, or say, let's play at such and such a game. She had a way of making peace even at home. When things were a little sad, she would change everything to sunshine. She would commence to laugh, and when asked what she was laughing at, she would say something amusing, which very often changed sadness to gladness, making everybody laugh. If father happened to be chafing me too hard, she would come to the rescue, laughing with all her might, and saying, Oh, you are an awful old father, to chafe her like that. This, of course, changed the subject, 
and all would be over. When she passed in the supplementary, she used to go to Holy Communion every morning. She often spoke of the happiness of it, and how one girl she knew had changed her family's careless ways by daily communion. Father used to take us to the various chapels for the forty hours' adoration, for we did not know the way. Margaret would say, Hurry up, for I shall be late for Sunday school. Father would give us a good place where we could see the altar. He would give us time to say the five decades of the rosary. Margaret would kneel so still and never turning round to see who was at the back of her. And when she got home, she would say, I wish it was not so far away and I would go by myself. She always had the highest marks for attending Sunday school and won many little prizes of pictures and beads. Margaret used to say that all the Sinclairs are full of pride and she was afraid of it and that they were all richer than ourselves but that we had the riches of all riches in our holy faith and a happiness that they have not got although we are poor because we are Catholics. We have a good father and mother, and isn't it good that mother had such a strong faith and that father turned out such a good Catholic, giving us such good education? She used to speak of that subject very often. She was always saying when she was younger, I am glad I am not a little Protestant. What a dull life it is to be like that. The little ones here just go to chapel to get a ticket when they are going to have a party. At times we used to have a mission and the children went to the chapel after school and when she got home she would tell about it. The mission father would give such a nice little sermon and tell such a lot of nice little stories. We had benediction too which she loved very much. When it came round to Lent or Christmas, she used to have a little piece of paper and she would say, one thousand or ten thousand Hail Marys and mark a little cross every time she said one to give little baby Jesus a little present. She used to get quite a lot said and she would say, See who can keep silence the longest, so as to advance more. When she was tempted to laugh when at her prayers, she would picture to herself our divine Lord with his crown of thorns, and it always kept her from laughing. She used to love visiting the different chapels at Christmas to see who had arranged the wee baby Jesus best, and she loved to burn the candles when she got the pennies when at school. When she left school, mother used to give her two or three, and she never forgot St. Anthony's box, as she had a great devotion towards him, and always so charitable to the poor blind people who used to sing in the street, or when they were very old. When they were young, she sometimes would say, I am sure they could work, but perhaps they cannot get any. So, when you give it for the love of God, it is all one. When going out to the night classes, she would sometimes keep silent all the way. Then she would laugh and say, Silence is golden. For goodness sake, say something. She often spoke of the Annunciation and all about our Blessed Lady and Saint Joseph, or some saint that did great penance. She used to speak of certain sisters and how devoted they were and cheerful. She would say, I am sure they must do great penance, and that is why they are always laughing. She often said, The beauty of one's soul shines in their eyes. She spoke to me of, I don't know what order, remarkable for their cheerfulness. 
although they did a lot of fasting and penance, and of some rich persons who used to wear rough coarse garments under their fine dresses. She spoke a lot about St. Margaret Mary and the devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. I do not know how she learned to know all the lives of the saints, but she used to tell me such a lot when we were by ourselves. She would buy the little books at the Sacred Heart, Laurenston, and sometimes she would read them at her work, when free, and she would tell me to read them. But I liked best when she would tell them to me, herself, when she was washing up. I would ask her to read such and such a story, and I would offer to do the washing up. But at times she would say, Well, I'm sure it is a sin for me to encourage you. It is very simple. I think it best that you should read it yourself. When we were alone in the bedroom, she would read out aloud and would ask me if the words were too big for me. It used to make me think, would I be so charitable if I were in her place? It is not many little sisters that are so full of charity as Margaret. She never once had any sign of pride when she explained things to me. Margaret was very fond of crochet, and she did many patterns for mother, who would be sitting knitting, for she was kept very busy to keep us all in stockings. She was also fond of dancing, but it was nearly always at St. Patrick's or the Sacred Heart or at the cathedral. Andrew and Margaret were very good at it. Mother would take us up for the old-fashioned dances, and Andrew would give us a chance of the later ones. Margaret used to take great pleasure in dancing with father, because he could not dance well, and she used to have great fun in trying to teach him. Of course, it was just in the house, and father and mother were just like a big brother and sister. They took part in the singing just like ourselves. Andrew alone would dance with us if mother was not there, taking us in turn, unless Margaret made him dance with some girlfriend. But we always came home with him. When she came home, she would always say, at least, her rosary, although sometimes she was very tired, for she would be up for every dance. But she would say, Well, I enjoyed myself very well, and I must give God his share. Look at us dancing and enjoying ourselves, and yet how many religious orders were up praying for us, and how many souls God has called home during that time. At other times also she would begin to sew, and then I went to bed, and after a little sewing she would begin to pray again, before she would go to bed. When she had a temptation, she would say, Jesus, ten times, slowly, thinking at the same time how powerful his holy name was, and her temptation would pass away. She spoke of mission work very often, and seemed to like anything connected with that work. She got a book for subscriptions to the propagation of the faith, and the restoration of the great basilica at Jerusalem, and she put in Father's and John's name too, who were with the army, and so they were spared to come home to us again. She saved up all the stamps to save souls, and we brought three little babies that were right black, but mother's was yellow or brown. I don't remember. It was her desire to call three of them after the little flower, so it was settled to call them Therese. She was always talking of her simple little life. Margaret loved music, 
but could not play anything. She also loved singing, but she would not sing unless it was just a little family gathering. When at benediction during the week and the choir was not too good, she would give me just a little touch to sing out as she thought I made a better attempt at it. And sometimes she would say, I wish I just had a little voice and I would not be afraid to glorify God with it. There were many boys who admired her, but she just served them all alike. She just used to say that she had never seen the boy that she could really say that she cared for. On Sundays, she used to sit in the room after Holy Communion, as it was the only time she had to make her thanksgivings in quietness and meditate. We went to the children of Mary until shortly before she entered the poor Clares. It was my fault, I think, for she liked it very well. Anyway, we used to go again at night to the Sacred Heart for the course of sermons, all to the cathedral, to hear the bishop. When she stayed for Mass, after Holy Communion, she was so full of love for our blessed Lord in the sacrament of the altar that I don't think that she knew it was the last gospel at times, for she never used to move. She had always a very respectful posture when in the chapel at all times. We went on retreat at Ferry Road twice, and it was very nice. Margaret kept the silence and was very happy and pleased, for each time after the sermon we went to the chapel to meditate for a quarter of an hour. She was so still before the blessed sacrament, exposed all day, and she loved to stay there nearly all the time on her knees. Some tried to speak to her, but Margaret said, to profit well, one must keep the silence. And she gave a little smile and passed on. Margaret used to say, that she was very proud-spirited and of high opinion, but she tried to master it, for she said that if she did not say that little prayer, Jesus, meek and humble of heart, she would very often rebel, for she felt like that. It was quite true, for if anyone said anything annoying to her or out of temper, she would rather leave the room for a while and come back when they had calmed down, than to say something for which she would be sorry afterwards. She believed much in thinking before speaking, and when she felt like writing a sharp letter, she always said it is best to sleep over it, and in the morning, if she still remained in the same opinion, she would write it, but sometimes she would change and write a nicer letter, and it always turned out best for mother. As I looked anything but pleasant at times, she gave me comfort by urging me to force myself to smile to the girls I met. For, she said, sometimes a girl may just be waiting for you to give a little smile first, and others may be in a little difficulty or out of sorts. As you never know one's troubles, a little smile like that, given in passing, brightens up the way for them, and you give them a little courage, and you help them to support their little trouble. She used to be like a little mother to me, telling me what to do in my difficulties. Margaret was very fond of speaking of the union that reigned in our family. Other girls would chafe us, because mother was so strict about our staying late out in the evening. All the girls knew that we must be home by nine o'clock. And they used to say very often, What do you go home so early for? Margaret would answer, Home is the best place. And they would say, It's impossible to separate your family, for when you see one, you see the others also. You two are always together, and mother or Andrew is always with you. I should like to see my own mother or brother coming out with me. Margaret would smile and say, Oh, it is just habit. Then, when we would be by ourselves, she would speak of the happiness 
of our union, and she would say to me, Look at such and such a family, big families of ten or twelve. Look how happy they could be if they were united like us. But instead, they all had their own little ways. One could hardly believe we had such good fun in our own little circle. Look, we can fall out and fall in again in a short time and all is forgotten whereas others are always searching for new friends and are seldom contented. It was Margaret who arranged for Nellie's conversion with the priest of St. Patrick's, as mother was not well at the time. She did more than John or Nellie ever knew of, for it was at the time when we all had the flu and the snow lay very heavy on the ground, and Margaret got up out of bed to go and meet Nellie. John had arranged with Nellie for Margaret to go and meet her, but Margaret had to wait a very long time in the cold, for Nellie was not there at the time appointed, and Margaret was so delighted that she was going to be instructed that she was there waiting for Nellie long before the time. But thanks be to God, her work was not in vain, for she turned out to be a good Catholic, and when Mother was well, she brought her to the Holy Family to be enrolled, and she was very happy. There was also another lady who had a big family, and Margaret did not care for her, but she used to get hold of her and say, Will you please give me the pledge? Of course, Margaret was very nice to her, though she would rather that she did not speak to her, and she would say, I cannot give you the pledge. The lady would say, well, read some prayers for me out of your prayer book, for Margaret carried Father's big prayer book to her work. Every time you read those prayers for me, I am always very good for a few months. She was not a Catholic. Margaret made lots of her own clothes, costumes, heavy coat, dress for the summer, dance dress, and many little baby dresses for the little ones that she was godmother for. Lizzie taught her how to make hats, and she was very clever at it. She would take an old hat down and make it up new again in a later style. She liked style much, but not to make her spoken of. She always dressed in very quiet colours, but very fashionable. But she did not go over the school. But Mother used to think that she was a little extravagant, she and Andrew. One time we went to Roswell for our holidays. She asked me what I thought, whether I thought of going to Mass and Holy Communion every morning during our stay there. So I told her I could not go. She was more than surprised at my answer and asked me why. I told her I thought I was not good enough for that. Perhaps I shall go to Mass, but Holy Communion, no. She told me that it was the devil that put that in my head. So she began to lecture me about going not only the weekend, but every day. By the time she had finished, she had me converted. So we never missed one morning. She kept saying, you will see, when you begin to go every day, you will find out that you cannot live without going. So. I found it quite true that when I came home I felt I could not rest in bed and Holy Mass going on at our door. So after that I was up and at the chapel door before it opened, thanks to dear little Margaret. She used to tell me, you are not going to Holy Communion because you are good, but because you want to try and be good. I cannot tell you the joy we had there at Roswell, for I cannot find the words to write. But Margaret spoke very often of that holiday. While staying there, she would cry out, Oh, how lovely it is here, away from all the noise of the world and all the temptations. For it was a little house in the heart of the country. What must convent life be like when country life is so happy? One morning, 
The priest sent a little boy to tell us to come into the sacristy. Father W is his name. So he gave us a nice talk and told us we were very good girls and to keep it up. So we were very happy. He had one hand on Margaret's shoulder and the other on mine and we felt like sinking right down under the ground for he was so big and powerful. I cannot tell you our joy. We used to draw the water a good distance from the house for the lady was very old. We would sing with all our might all the hymns that we knew to the Sacred Heart and our Blessed Lady. I shall never forget the happiness that she had that holiday. We felt so sorry for the chapel though, for it was a school during the day. But she had a great joy before she entered the convent, and it was when we went to see Bishop Graham laying the foundation stone for a new chapel. It was a most lovely ceremony. When she would speak of it, you would really think that heaven was at hand. She always made it her business when she was away at some strange town or countryside to find out the chapel and pay a visit to the Blessed Sacrament. I remember at Rossi the housekeeper let us in and the girls came several times to take us out again. But they found us making the stations and Margaret was reading the prayers out aloud and I was answering the Pate, Ave and Gloria and the girl let us finish. I am sure we were in for about two hours, and both of us were so happy that we had the chapel all to ourselves because it was getting repaired. When we were away from home, she would write home every day and tell where we were and where we were going, and she would always put on the top of her letters in extra big letters Praised be Jesus Christ. Margaret used to say often that she was not strong, but Mother thought she was just saying that to make us laugh, for she was rather big and fat, and she had nice rosy cheeks, just till she took the flu. When we were alone, she would say, I am quite sure I shall not live long. I do not know why, but I just feel like that and she would be very serious when she said this to me. She never wished to live long. She said she could not picture herself living long. When mother was forty, she said to her, Oh, fancy, living for forty years. Her influence on me was very great. I used to ask her lots of questions, and she used to answer me in a way which I found it best to act upon. If I thought that I had hurt father's or mother's feeling, she would find out for me how to make it up. If it was mother, she would say to me, Offer your services after tea. Just say, Mother, I shall wash up for you, and you have a little rest, or else ask her what to do. With father, she used to pass it off with a joke. Sometimes, when I had caused trouble to her, I would ask her why she would speak to me again so quickly and so nicely after what I had said or done. She would answer, Well, one of us must make an act of humility, and seeing that I did not do it, she would do it. She told me several times that it was my place, as I was older. At night, after having said her rosary, when we were late for the family rosary, she would take father's big prayer book and ask me what prayers we should ask for that night. Then she would read out aloud the prayers, at the end of which we would say, Jesus, 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 and ask for some request which we wished granted to us. There was one, however, asking of God to send us purgatory on earth. I asked her why she never asked that one. I am afraid God might make me a burden to my father and mother. Otherwise I would, 
for you know how father and mother would work themselves to death to make me well again, and I would not like that, so I shall put it off a little longer. Now I ask you to remember me in your prayers, as I am more than happy in my vocation as a little sister of the poor. I remain in Jesus and Mary. Bella